All right, this is the Bible Ranger here, and we're going to be talking about health and wellness, part one, episode 10, preparing for end times. And there'll be a series of these, okay? And the subject is the history, how medicine changed. And do realize that this is for inf informational purposes only. So I'm not a doctor. I'm just a person who does a lot of research and will be giving you information from people with PhDs and doctors that do a lot of research. And I'm handing it over to you. So keep that in mind, please. All right. It all starts with William Avery Rockefeller. Okay. And that was the father of the big famous tycoon, John D. Rockefeller. And basically, William Avery Rockefeller was, was a corn artist. They used to call him Big Bill. And he cheated everyone, anyone, at any time. And then he boasted about it. Not only that, but he taught... He cheated his kids every way he could. And to him, he was making it seem like he was teaching them to prepare for the world. Now, while he never received the medical train never medical training, he advertised himself as a doctor in the local directory. And he's basically said this. He said, All cases of cancer cured, unless too far gone, then they can be greatly benefited. And he had this cup caption that he made. And basically what it was, it had, it had petroleum in it and it had alcohol in it and some other things. But those are the two main um, ingredients. Now, John D. Rockefeller Sr., the one and only, by the way, the oil tycoon himself. He learned his father's way the best, considered to be the wealthiest American of all times. Of course, inflation corrected. And by the way, this is him when he was younger. Let me get this thing to work. This is when he was younger, and this is when he was older here. Okay, same person. All right, um, he, he said this when it came to monopoly. He said, monopoly is not the product of a free enterprise capitalism, but the escape from it. Basically, he makes his own rules up, and whatever says, whatever he thinks is right to make himself more profitable is the way it goes. I call it crony capitalism. One is an advantage over the average person. Matter of fact, one way that he took over everybody else, he would invite them over to a dinner. He would show them their books, his books, and he would say, look, I can bring the prices to nothing, no profit whatsoever, longer than you can. So I'll hire you into my business. I'll pay you for yours. And we're all good and happy. Well, he meant you'll be good and happy, but that's how he got almost everybody. Oh, he had another famous quote, and the famous quote was, competition is a sin, and he really meant that. Knowing that profit potentials for drugs was enormous, especially per, for prescription drugs, he had a plan. John D. Rockefeller did nothing small. In the early 1900s, he and his affiliates pushed licensing laws for medical practitioners. In other words, Doctors had to get a, a license, and then they had to get a license to work in the hospitals. And, and once he controlled that, all the other people that were natural had a disadvantage. And basically, he made them illegal, for, a better, for lack of a better word. It made it difficult for them to practice. In 1913, the Rockefeller Foundation was created with the emphasis of medicine and medical education. It sounds all innocent, doesn't it? Also in 1913, the Bureau of Chemistry, or it became the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, they were made to make the approvals. And what I mean by that is his system. The citizens, like us, you know, back then, they, uh, they had no legal recourse against the, the chemical industry anymore. Now they were protected. Now, true to the competition, it's a sin saying that he used to have. Rockefeller Foundations donated, and I mean by donated, he gave them millions of dollars just for no reason whatsoever. He just wanted somebody to be in the board of directors, you know, overseers, you know, behind the scenes. And eventually the overseers became from one person to two people and they became the, the people who control the board and they got rid of the people they wanted. Also in 1913, that number keeps popping up, the American Cancer Association was formed while Rockefeller Foundation 
uh, donated money to Harvard University. What a coincidence. Eventually, they controlled the board and made them compliant to his system. Of course, he didn't call it that, but his plan. The schools had to abandon traditional and natural medicine. Doctors treating any other way but his were called quacks. And that's still going on today, by the way. All right, fighting against natural medicine. The FDA, Rockefeller Foundation, and the AMA, the American Medical Association, they worked together. Compliant schools received the money from the Rockefeller Foundation, while competing doctors got FDA police action. Yes, police action. The FDA pushed effective, good vitamins to be prescribed, while the weakest are allowed to be sold over the counter. And by the way, once you get a drug or a vitamin to be prescribed, you don't really have control of the price. They do. And you don't complain because when you're there, you don't even know what price is going to be. You get billed and then you find out. It's a, it's a great way to hide this stuff. Also, in this picture here, there's actually a raid going on for a place that was selling raw milk. You believe that? Because it's not pasteurized and it wasn't homogenized. And if you think that's great, homogenized and pasteurized, there was an experiment made some years ago where they took a newborn calf and all they did was feed it milk from stores that was homogenized and pasteurized and it died in, in nine months. So you're not really getting milk unless it's really raw milk. All right, doctors, good doctors pay a high price. Even Nobel Peace Prize winners of medicine, not Peace Prize, but um, medicine winners, um, they had superior results and they were still demonized. Some doctors died in prison for curing patients with unapproved medication. And it means it's not theirs because the FDA is not approving it. So now they make it seem like they're doing something illegal. You're unapproved. And now you're doing something that it's against their cause. Still happening today, there's people that have been cured by cancer. So they claim, I'm just telling you what they say. And they got so excited and they want to, they say, you know, I can make some money doing this showing people what I did and they've done that and and they try to make a little bit of money doing it and they've been jailed they've been fined and something in here I'll talk about it in the future but depending how you say it it could be illegal or it could be beneficial now I'll talk to talk about that in a future episode now curing is illegal when you're talking about natural things okay because when they say cure it has to be approved by them if it's not if it's not approved by them then you're practicing medicine if you don't have a degree now if you have a degree they can't claim that you don't have a degree so now they call you a quack and they try to discredit you and and bankrupt you and sue you until you just basically give up other facts you might want to know in 1937 nobel prize in medicine uh phd albert zentz gore Gorgai, I'm not sure how to say his name, but he was basically the discoverer of vitamin C. And he had a statement that said that the American Cancer Association tried to ruin my research foundation. And they do this all the time. I can give you a lot of examples. They burn people's places down. They destroy their equipment. They burn their books. Now, since the Rockefeller Foundation took over, heart disease and cancer have skyrocketed. You would think it would be better because it's approved, but no, it isn't. Now the Rockefeller, Rockefeller himself, John D. Rockefeller, never took his own medications, and of course his affiliates either. He took traditional holistic medication, and guess what? He lived to about 97, 98 years old. Incredible. You know, it's like they never learn. A couple of years ago, Pfizer got caught hiding an Alzheimer's cure slash preventative drug. It's effective about 64% of the time when it went to help Alzheimer's. Now, basically what it was, it was a drug that was already made and it was a, it's a rheumatoid arthritis drug called Enbrel. And, um, and somehow it found, somebody found there was a link, I think through insurance claims that there was a, a way to help Alzheimer's, but they kept quiet and they kept making money off of, because you can have Alzheimer's for a year, you can have it for 20 years, and you have to be on medication for all that time. So I can't accuse them. I'm just giving you what the article says. And 
it seems to be one-sided to me. So this Emerol is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Pharmaceutical companies know that people will pay anything for relief, for, you know, from sicknesses and from pain. That's true. I mean, who wants to be in pain? Our hospitals are great for emergency services. You know, for heart attacks, if you have one of those, a stroke, snake bite, a broken bone, please go to the hospital. Please go to the emergency. We have the best doctors for that, and we are tremendous at taking care of that. Now, saying that, hospitals going to the hospital can carry a high risk. There's a word called itro, high atrogenic, high atrogenic, and that basically these are causes by the hospitals themselves, by doctors, by, um, these are the stats here. L last year, a couple years ago, there was 225, almost a quarter million deaths that year. And 12,000 was from unnecessary surgeries. 7,000 was from medical errors. 20,000 was from other hospital errors. There's too many to, to list. 80,000 of them were in for infections from hospitals. $106,000, I'm skipping, 106,000 was from non-era negative effect drugs. In other words, they prescribed the correct drug and you still died because of something happened. You had a bad effect or something happened and it was correctly prescribed. And this is almost half of all the other ones above. That's incredible. So let's be proactive. Let's take care of ourselves. In other words, doctor ourselves. All right, if that's not bad enough, not only are people getting sicker and taking more medications, but medical debt causes 60% of all the US bankruptcies. You know, we were talking about money last few episodes. 60, more than half of those are because people can't afford their medical bills, and that's horrible. Dr. Atkins from the famous Atkins diet, okay, um, he, this is what he said. He says that we have several cures for cancer. This is him saying, not me, but there is no money in them. Um, they're natural, they're effective, they're inexpensive. No expensive drugs are involved but they require quite a lot of self-discipline from the patients themselves. So I'll be listing in the near future here um, things that can actually help you out um, from what they say. I'm just passing the information down. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, there's been a lot of negative things said about the system. And I'm not talking about individual doctors. They, they really want to help you out, okay? But, but it's hard to fight a giant. It's the Goliath against David. It really, really is. So anyway, you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God is our creator. He knows what we need, but, or however, even taking the right diet sometimes isn't good enough. And I will explain that in the series to come. I will help you to, I will point out good research from the experts and you do your own research. We help each other out here. Um, in this series, I will be covering nutrition, diabetes, detoxing, weight loss, pain relief, pain relief, letting your body heal itself, and much more. So, you know, please pass it around, tell other people, and this, this should be very helpful. It'll be very practical and very helpful. All right, eternal healing is our ultimate goal. And there's a great verse in the Bible, Isaiah 53, 5. Because of his wounds, we are healed. Unfortunately, that verse gets really misinterpreted by most preachers as a, as a healing verse for the body. And you know, if you read it in content, that is not what that verse is saying. That verse is talking about that we are sick in our sins. And when Christ comes, he's going to put the sins on himself. And he's going to be able to take away our sins. And he's going to heal us, spiritually speaking. And it, it is, it's for you to take. All you have to do, you have to repent. You have to receive his gift and you will be spiritually healed. Uh, can God heal you? Yes. But sometimes you have people in wheelchair their whole life. But at least, you know, when they pass away or Christ, Christ comes back, they will have a glorified body and, they'll, and forever they will be physically healed and obviously with him spiritually. So if you found this information to be useful, you know, please subscribe and thumbs up and tell a friend, put it on Facebook, share it, and this is the Bible Ranger.
um, keeping the Bible simple, yet rich in content. Thank you very much.